Hi, in this video, we will look at the Render Layers tab of the Properties panel. You can think of Render Layers as breaking up your scene into parts, such as separating the background, the foreground, and perhaps the main character, for example. You can then work on them separately and then combine them into one epic image using this tab. So here we can see the, all the layers we have so far. Currently, we only have one layer called the Render Layer. So for example, if I create a few objects here, so I did that by pressing Shift A, Mesh, uh, you know, whatever shape I want. Um, you don't have to know this for now. We, we will look at this in a separate tutorial, but just a proof of concept. I can then go ahead and move this to its own layer. So you can see all the layers we have here in 3D viewport. This is also reflected in the render layers tab as well. So if I press M, this will move to a new layer. And I can select which layer I want to move it to. Let's move this to another layer, the third layer. And let's move this to another layer, the fourth layer. So as you can see, these little dots here signify that there's something in those layers. The orange dot signifies that something has been selected in this layer. In this case, the icosphere. So I can also change the layers from here as well. The great thing about render layers is if I, I can add another render layer and say I just want to have the first two layers. So I say first two layers. So now if I only want to render the first two layers, I just select this one, shift, select this one. So even if I select all layers like so, so to select all layers, just press the tilde key on your keyboard. That's the one above the tab key. Um, and if I press F12, oops, sorry, it's better if I can uh, position the camera real quick so that I can see everything. If I press F12 now, well, you'll see that it didn't work. It's still rendered everything. And that's because we still have the render layers tab, which has enabled all layers in this case. So I'm gonna turn this off for this case and then render again. So that only the first two layers take into effect. And you can see that now only the cube and sphere have been rendered. Let's open up a new layer actually and say the last two layers. Uh, and let's move, let's just say we want the third and the fourth layer to be affected only. So if I go ahead and render now, this will be our first two layers and it will render again to render our last two layers. So it doesn't really know which one to use. So it's actually created for us the layers in a separate tab here in the image editor. As you can see, those are the two images that have been created. You can then go ahead and use the compositor to combine these two images. Or if you prefer to use Photoshop or GIMP or whatever, you can save these images into your own folders uh, one by one. And then you can work on those two images together in, a, in some video editor. So that's basically what the render layers is used for. And also there's some extra handy features. For example, you can have excludes and things like that. So for example, if I want to render just the first, this is, let's just turn this off and render all layers for now. And I, But I want to exclude whatever's in the second layer. So I want to exclude the sphere. So let's just say this exclude. And now let's render. It now renders everything but the sphere, regardless of all layers being selected in this render layer. Next is passes. So these are extra passes that you can use. You can have a separate render layer for mist or UV or shadows or ambient occlusion and things like that. Um, you can play around with these effects. Uh, these are advanced stuff, so best not to go into this in detail. The most important thing that you need to know about render layers tab is in here and here. And that's pretty much what I have to say about the render layers tab. And that's pretty much all I have to say about the render layers tab. In the next video, we will look at the scene tab of the properties panel.